When it comes to thermal properties of building materials, the standard for measurement is ASTM C518. Here, a heat flow apparatus measures heat transfer through homogeneous materials, like insulation. Properties like thermal resistance, conductance, and conductivity can be determined from temperature, heat flux, area, and thickness data. ASTMC 1363 Hotbox measures the thermal performance of building envelope assemblies. Measurements include the effects of thermal bridging due to structural components as well as insulated cavities. When it comes to thermal insulation, there are many types. For your reference, they include fiberglass, mineral wool, cellulose, open and closed cell foam plastics, reflective insulation, and radiant barriers. All have their inherent strengths and weaknesses. Then there are insulating sheathings, typically placed toward the exterior of the building envelope. These include expanded polystyrene, extruded polystyrene, polyisocyanurate, and fiberglass board. Here's a rundown of how thermal properties of various materials and systems are rated. As we've seen, insulation materials and building envelope systems are characterized by their resistance to heat flow. Here are the values you may find in the literature. Material performance can be rated according to thermal conductivity, K, thermal conductance, C, and thermal resistance, R value. When it comes to system performance, total thermal resistance is shown as R sub T, and thermal transmittance is shown as U factor or U value. Now, when it comes to material surface performance, emissivity ratings are indicated by this symbol, and reflectivity is indicated by this symbol. There are three ASHRAE methods for calculating thermal performance of insulated assemblies. The first is the isothermal planes method. This is used when cross sections have continuous, homogeneous layers. The second method, the parallel path flow method, is used when cross sections have structural and cavity areas and when components have similar thermal resistance. The third method, the modified zone method, is used with steel framed assemblies. These assemblies have cross sections with both structural and cavity areas. Structural components are highly conductive and create thermal bridges. The reference for this is Chapter 25 of the ASHRAE Handbook of Fundamentals. We're going to look at each of the three methods for calculating thermal performance of assemblies in a moment, but first, here are some points to remember when calculating or reviewing heat flow data. The definition, you'll remember, is heat flow is the rate at which heat moves from an area of higher temperature to an area of lower temperature. The equation for calculating heat flow is this. Where the symbols represent these values, U is thermal transmittance expressed in these units. A equals area in square feet. Delta T equals temperature difference through the material in degrees Fahrenheit. We'll look at some typical calculations of thermal performance using each of the three methods. First, the isothermal planes method. This is the simplest of the three calculations. Here's an example. All of the layers in the insulated masonry wall are assumed to be homogeneous. The thermal resistance of each component is added to determine a total thermal resistance of the wall. In the assembly you see here, the total thermal resistance equals 11.61. U value is the inverse of total thermal resistance. U value is necessary to perform whole building energy calculations. Chapter 25 of the ASHRAE Handbook of Fundamentals provides complete details. The parallel path flow method is a little more complicated. Two different heat flow paths exist in an insulated wood frame assembly. They are the cavity path and the wood frame path. Thermal resistance for each path is calculated and combined, giving proportional weight to each path. In this wall, the combined R value is 12.79. Again, the ASHRAE manual contains detailed information for making calculations. Before we look at the last method, this may help you appreciate heat transfer in metals. First, metals conduct 300 to 1,000 times more heat than most building materials. 
the thermal impact of a metal stud in a framed cavity is greater than the actual surface area of the stud, so metal has an exaggerated effect on heat transfer out of proportion to its physical size. This thermographic image will give you an idea of how heat transfers readily through a steel stud compared to a wood stud. The modified zone method is a complex calculation, so if you or an associate wish to make calculations for steel or masonry assemblies with strong thermal bridges throughout, we suggest you use the free online calculator at the Oak Ridge National Laboratory. The web address is on the screen. And for a brief discussion of thermal properties and thermal performance data, download the CertainTeed Commercial Insulation Product Overview at CertainTeed.com.